Hey there, this is a guide on how to get the Skullstorm achievement in Inscription. This achievement is very hard, so be prepared. Um, what you have to do is you have to win a run with every single uh, Skull modifier enabled, as so. Now, I can't make an exact guide of how to get this achievement. All I can do is give you the best tips and tricks in order to make it as far as you can. Uh, there's a lot of RNG in this achievement. Uh, sometimes you just get a bad totem, you get a bad starting hand, and there's not a lot you could do. So be prepared to restart a lot. Now, I would recommend going with the Bone Starting Deck. Uh, it gives you access to the Direwolf Pop right away, and the Direwolf Pop will be how you get through most encounters and boss fights. So one of the things you're going to want to focus on during runs is you're going to try to go to every single campfire you can. Uh, the reason behind this is you need the direwolf pup to be at a base around a 3-3 uh, three, three, ideally. A 3-3 three, three or a 4-3 is really good. Um, you pretty much every campfire you go to you're going to want to uh, give it to the direwolf. Uh, for early Barton runs I would recommend trying to risk it and go for two. So you can see here it worked. Um, this obviously won't always work out, but it, when you're in the beginning of runs, you might as well risk it. So another really important part of getting Skull Storm is the items. Um, you're going to want to have all the items unlocked. I'll make another video of how to get them from the paintings. Um, however, the one big item you need is the Wise Clock. Uh, what this will do is it will rotate all items clockwise once, and it will be very useful in beating the uh, Grizzly Bears at the end of each boss fight. Now, another tip I can give you is to save scum as often as you need to. Uh, I generally don't go for the totems from the totem carver. Uh, I you, you, I get them maybe around second or third phase, but I, I think on my successful school storm run, I didn't even have a totem. Um, but what you're able to do is you could peek at the totems to see if it has one that will really help you. And if it doesn't, you could just return to menu and then go the other path. In this clip, I get the magpie's eye, which is very useful. So, boss fights. There's a few ways you can go about boss fights with the strategy. I'll go through the three that I ended up using the most, uh, and you could just pick them as you need them. The first strategy is if you have Wise Clock. Um, how you're going to want to do it is you're going to want to have the Direwolf in your second slot and nothing in your first slot, and then when you enter phase two, use the Wise Clock, and that will shift the Direwolf over one, and it will shift nothing above it, and it'll allow your Direwolf to get direct damage. To do this strategy, however, you're going to need to have at least plus one attack power on your direwolf. If not, a grizzly bear will be shifted down because you didn't finish him in one turn, and then the rest of the grizzly bears will attack, and if you don't have enough blockers, you'll lose the fight. So just keep that in mind if you're going for this. The other strategy is if you have either scissors or the hunting knife. Um, with either of these, you can just stab or slice the card in front of your direwolf, uh, and as long as you have plus one attack power, again, uh, that will let you kill Leshy in one turn, and it's about the same thing. Now, if you don't have either of these, then uh, you're going to need the direwolf to have a lot of attack and health. Uh, the ideal is three attack power. More is obviously better, but three attack power is enough to kill a grizzly bear in one hit. Uh, and then you're going to need six health in order to survive an attack from the grizzly bear. You can't just have five because of the annoying sigil that will let the grizzly bear deal five damage to you instead of just four and that will kill your direwolf, so you need any amount of health increase from the base health of the direwolf. But if you have your direwolf's stat high enough, all you need to do is block the rest of the slots, either using the boulder item, the possum item, or just cards from your deck, and yeah, you'll be good. Hey there, just a quick heads up before I progress, uh, there will be spoilers for the hidden final boss, um, so if you don't want to see that yet, then uh, just skip ahead to this timecode. So, the modified final boss. Um, I'm not going to talk about it too long, it's not too hard. Uh, as long as you have something on your side of the board, uh, skeletons will pop off the boat and help you fight. They deal two damage and only survive one turn. Uh, they cannot block for you, uh, so you need to always have something on your side of the board that can take two damage, or just take any damage. Uh, make sure you don't put all your cards down at once, I'd say only play one card at a time, uh, so that you always have something to stop you from taking damage. Uh, and yeah, good luck. Alright, that's all I got. Uh, as a little bonus, I'm going to scroll through all the dev logs. Uh, you can pause them and read them if you want to know the lore of Casey's mod. If not, then yeah, that's it. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. I'll try to answer all I can. And thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please like it, subscribe if you want to, and good luck getting this cheap. Have a nice day.